Welcome to Co-op Connections, an online workshop sponsored by CDS Consulting Co-op. Thanks for joining us. October is Co-op Month, and in honor of that, we thought we'd kick it off early with our exploration of the sixth Co-op principle, cooperation among cooperatives. We are so honored and grateful to have joining us a most amazing collection of worldwide leaders in the co-op movement. I'd like to thank all of our panelists for joining us today. And as you can see from our list of esteemed colleagues, the depth and breadth of knowledge and expertise gathered here is impressive. And I'm sure you're as anxious as I am to hear what they have to say. So here's how our hour will go. I'll talk for just a few minutes, and then we'll move on to our fantastic panelists. After their presentations, hopefully we've got space for a few questions we'd love for them to answer and discuss before wrapping up our time today. Now here's what we hope to accomplish. Greater understanding of the larger world of co-ops and how our own co-ops fit into that picture. We'll learn more about our own co-op connections, those co-ops and associations that our co-op is a member of or works with heightened enthusiasm about cooperatives. That's always a good thing. We'll celebrate Co-op Month. I think of our hour here as a virtual kickoff party. And getting the word out for the upcoming United Nations International Year of the Cooperative. So we're so glad to have you along today. So without further ado, let's hear what our special guests have to say. First up, I'd like to welcome Paul Hazen, President and CEO of the National Cooperative Business Association. Take it away, Paul. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to be here, and it's a great time to be a cooperator. We're seeing that people are drawn to cooperatives uh, in the United States and around the world more and more every day. Uh, as people are trying to find solutions to the problems that they're facing in their local communities and around the world. I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, how cooperatives can work together uh, to improve our local economies, to improve the environment, and improve the lives of people everywhere. I think it's important to start off to know that uh, there are uh, many cooperatives in our country and, and around the world. Some that you might recognize here, of course, would be uh, Organic Valley, which many of the food co-ops uh, work with. Uh, but there's also other cooperatives like Ace Hardware or Associated Press, uh, Sunkist, or your local food, uh, food co-op that you're a member of, a credit union or a housing cooperative. Uh, next slide, please. No matter, no matter where you are in the United States, there are uh, cooperatives op out there offering services. The organization that I'm privileged to work for, the National Cooperative Business Association, we bring people together from uh, all across different types of cooperatives to work together for common solutions. Uh, we, we provide legislative support, education and training programs, and cooperative development, help giving people in local communities the tools uh, to, uh, to solve the problems that they're facing. Uh, most people from around the world are surprised to learn in the United States the, you know, the citadel of capitalism that we're home to a strong and vibrant vibrant cooperative movement. Uh, in the United States, there are 29,000 cooperatives with over 120 million members. According to the International Cooperative Alliance, the United States accounts for more than 60 of the three largest, 300 largest cooperatives in the world. Uh, in our nation today, we are witnessing another wave of cooperative development in a direct response to the uh, financial collapse and the resulting recession. In response, our citizens are, are doing what they always do in time of crisis. They cooperate. For example, deposits and loans are up at credit unions. Purchasing cooperatives are seeing record sales. And people are forming local alternative energy cooperatives uh, to provide themselves with solar and wind power. Buying groups are, are flourishing. And more and more people are joining worker cooperatives. Once, once more, people are putting their faith in cooperation to bring the United States out of recession. The United States has a strong and enduring sentiment that can help you trust your cooperative. And that's never been more true than now. Uh, next slide, please. Cooperatives are woven into the fabric of our nation. Uh, over 70% of the U.S. adult population are members of cooperatives. Just last year, there was a study released by the University of Wisconsin 
which showed the uh, basic statistics for cooperatives here in the United States. On your screen you can see those, but you have some very impressive numbers. Over two million jobs are created by uh, uh, cooperatives in our country. We have over three trillion dollars in assets and one percent of the uh, GDP. I'm proud to say that our organization, NCBA, was the spearhead to get these uh, cooperative data assembled. It's the first time ever that we've had complete data on all types of cooperatives. I'm going to go a little bit deeper now on the next slide into some more statistics about uh, cooperatives. Commercial sales and marketing cooperatives uh, provide a, a variety of uh, services uh, to uh, people around the country. There are five subsectors here, mainly in the farming and craft and retail sectors. This sector accounts for almost $61 billion in assets and $175 billion in revenue. Uh, next slide. Social service and public service uh, cooperatives are composed of firms that provide a diverse array of health care, housing, transportation, and educational services. Housing co-ops dominate this aggregate sector in terms of the number of entities, but health care dominates in the terms of economic activity. I, be I bet you didn't know that there are over 300 health care cooperative providers in the United States with $1 billion in assets and $3.2 billion in revenue. Next slide, please. Financial services are composed of credit unions, banks, and the farm credit system, and mutual insurance companies. The uh, cooperative financial sector accounts for the largest share of, share of assets, followed by mutual insurance, uh, credit unions, and the farm credit. There are over 8,000 credit unions in the United States with over 90 million members. Uh, they collectively account for about 6% of the assets in, in our total economy, uh, mainly focused on consumer goods and services. Next slide, please. Utility cooperatives provide electric, telephone, and water services. There are over 4,500 of these uh, cooperatives. We were surprised when we started this survey. We thought there were only about 900 uh, electric cooperatives and 600 uh, telephone cooperatives. But we found over 3,000 water cooperatives spread out through this, uh, our entire country. Once again, people providing themselves with goods and services that they couldn't get uh, in the marketplace. So what does this all add up to? Well, we can see on the next slide uh, the map of the United States and where all the different types of cooperatives are located. And uh, we will be using this data to later this year come out with a, uh, a website uh, where you'll be able to search for all the cooperatives in uh, your community and, and across your state and across the entire country. Um, and so this will be an example of the type of thing that we could do on a global basis if we had all the different types uh, of cooperatives in a database to encourage people to find uh, cooperatives. Next slide, please. Cooperatives impact the lives of Americans every minute of every day. Having the data on U.S. cooperatives shows the public and the government that there's a, that this is the case. That only, uh, but it's only part of NCBA work. NCBA's work. We've also taken Gallup polls that reveal that people would rather do business with cooperatives. Surveys have found that only 40 percent of consumers understand the cooperative difference. But when the cooperative model is explained. 66% would rather do business with cooperatives. What we find is that consumers trust cooperatives, and we hope to build upon this trust and prove these numbers with this data and research. Raising the consumer awareness of the cooperatives and linking cooperatives around the world are just two reasons that we have been working through our uh, international organization, the International Cooperative Alliance, uh, to help pass a United Nations resolution. Next slide, please designating 2012 as the International Year of Cooperatives. The United Nations has uh, set up, uh, has asked our government to set up a national committee with all people from the government and stakeholders and UN agencies to coordinate activities here in the United States to promote the International Year of Cooperatives. We're working through our international organization, the ICA, who is leading this campaign to bring the world together into a common strategy for celebrating the International Year. We are forming our own committees here in the United States, and you can go to NCBA's website 
at ncba.coop, uh, next slide please, to find out where we're focusing our attention. We're focusing our effort on uh, first raising our profile of cooperatives before our government and consumers, secondly focusing on social media to reach out to young people, and third on developing the research and the case for cooperatives to demonstrate that cooperatives are the better business model. Early next year, uh, the, United, the uh, uh, United States Senate will be considering a resolution designating 2012 as the International Year of Cooperatives here in the United States and asking Pre President Obama to celebrate this important milestone. And we will look for, uh, forward to your participation in helping us, helping us to convince your senators to, to support that resolution. Last slide, please. Cooperatives have always grown in the time of economic crisis, and so this economic, current economic crisis gives us a unique opportunity to promote cooperatives uh, to people in our uh, communities, to people in our nation, and to people around the world. You can find out more information on the NCBA website, which is the next slide. And let's go to the next slide where you can actually find links for many of the, much of the information that I provided with you today. So Joel, that's the conclusion of my presentation and I look forward to answering questions uh, later.